All right, so today we're going to get into section 9.3 over two-way tables. So two-way tables is what we're going to discuss today. So here are some key vocabulary words um, about two-way tables. Obviously, first we have the vocab word two-way table, which displays two categories of data collected from the same source. That will make sense once you see an example of what it looks like. Joint frequency is each individual entry in a two-way table, and marginal frequency is the sum of the rows and columns in a two-way table. They are the totals. So, marginal frequency is basically when you add up your joint frequencies and come up with different totals in the two-way table. So this is what a two-way table looks like, and the joint frequency and marginal frequency are labeled. So. I want to make sure we know how to read this table. So, first of all, the number in the bottom right-hand corner, that is your total overall. Overall number of people or how, things or whatever that were um, taken into account in this survey or in this um, data set. So, two-way table says takes into account two different data from the same source. So here, we're talking about the gender, male or female, and whether they drive an SUV or a sports car. Okay, so the boxes where they line up, the joint frequencies are the inside four. So it's these four right here. Those are joint frequencies. Those are just the individual entries. And then your marginal frequencies are these. Those are your totals, and I'll explain those a little more in a second. But for example, 21. 21 represents the males who drive SUVs. So that is where that number comes from. 39 is the males who drive a sports car. So there's 39 males that drive a sports car. Females that drive an SUV is 135, and females that drive a sports car is 45. And then these totals. First of all, total of 60 is adding up this and this to get this. 60 if you look, if you just go all the way over, 60 is the total number of males in this data set. So 60 is the total number of males. And then down here, this is 135 plus 45 equals 180. 180 is your total number of females. So that is what that talks about. All right, and then on the bottom, it's the same thing. You're just adding the ones above it. So 156 is adding up 21 and 135. 156, if you go up, is the total number of SUVs. And then lastly, 84 is 39 and 45, and that's your total number of sports cars. Here's another thing to make sure you understand um, how two-way ta two tables works, and if, the, if you're working one out, if you did it correctly. Your total marginal frequencies here have to add up to equal this. Your total marginal frequencies here also have to add up to equal this. So if these two and these two don't add up to be the same thing, you did something incorrectly. So that is how you read your marginal frequency and joint frequency in a two-way table. So let's go ahead and look at this example. It says, find and interpret the marginal frequencies for the survey below. So I'm going to go ahead and add on some table just to... Make sure I can find my marginal frequency. So, my marginal frequency for this box would be, again, this is just adding up these two numbers. So, 21 and, 20, 21 and 2 is 23. I, understand, I should have said this at first, but this here it says students studied, did not study, and then their grade, if they passed or failed. So, we're this data set is comparing if students studied or not, and then if they passed or failed. So, this one's 23, and then we go on to this one, where we add up 1 and 6, that would be 7. So whenever you're adding them up, you're just adding them up, either if it's these boxes, you're adding them up this way, and if it's the bottom boxes, you're adding them up, up and down. So 21 and 1 should give you 22, and then 2 and 6 should give you 8. So here, our total, overall total, 23 plus 7 is 30, but 
but this has to match it as well. 22 and 8, that is also 30. So the total number of students interviewed or looked at in this data set is 30. Interpret means to tell what it means. So 23, what does that number mean? That is the total number of students who passed. So students who passed. So that's just labeling what each one is. So then seven, if I go all the way over, that is the fail. So students who failed. So we're just labeling what each one means. Then we go to here, 22. If we go up and we see studied, so this is the number of students who study. So 22 is the number of students who study. And then 8, if we look up, did not study. So number of students who did not study. So that is how we interpret each of them. And then 30 is just your overall number. Um, you could just say total, this is tough to write, total number of students. So that is how we find the marginal frequencies and then interpret the marginal frequencies. So we take each row or column and add them up to get our marginal frequencies. Okay, so that is how we find each one. So I want you to try one of these on your own. So copy that table down. Try to find and interpret your marginal frequencies. All right, hopefully you paused the video and tried it. So now, once we look at this, we see that this data set talks about a football game, attend or not attend, and then a dance, attend or not attend. So basically, we're looking at students who, we had a football game and a dance, and we're looking at the ones who attended and attended the football game, did not attend the football game, attended the dance, did not attend the dance. So. First, let's find our marginal frequency. So, marginal frequency here is just adding up these two uh, joint frequencies. So, that would be 35 plus 5 is 40. And if you want to interpret it as you go, you can do that too. So, 40, if we go all the way over, attended the dance. So, students, I'm going to put students who attended dance. Students who attended the dance. There are 40 students who attended the dance. Then below, this should be 16 plus 20, that is 36. And that is students who students who did not attend the dance. Students who did not attend dance. Okay. Then we move on over here to the football game. This marginal frequency is 35 and 16. That would equal 51. And if we look, 51 is the students who attended the football game. So students who attended football game. I know my writing's not the best. I'm just doing my best to write it down quickly. So students who attended the football game was 51. Then next, 5 and 20 gives you 25. 
So that means 25 students did not attend the football game. So students who did not attend football game. And as I said, your total overall should be should match when you add these and when you add those. Luckily, when you add both, you get 76. So that is total number of students. Total number of students. All right, perfect. So. I do want to make sure we can read the joint frequencies too and understand what those mean. So like for example, 35 is the number of students who attend the football game and attend the dance. So you have to be able to put those together. And like five, for example, did not attend the football game, but did attend the dance. So that is also important to be able to interpret as well. Being able to read these two way tables um, will make it much easier on you to manipulate it. So this one says, fill in the missing frequency in the two-way table. Then find percent of males who do not like orange juice. Okay, so there's actually two parts here. First, it says to fill in the missing joint frequency. So our missing joint frequency is here. So if our missing joint frequency is here, we have to think, how would I find that missing joint frequency? So, if you remember, it's kind of using a little bit of um, higher level thinking. These numbers on the outside, the marginal frequencies, are when you add up the joint frequencies. So, for example, 44 was when you added up 12 and 32, and you got 44. 59, you added up 12, 47, got 59. So, to get 76, I add up 47 in this box to get 76. And just the opposite here, or just the same thing here. To get 61, I add up 32 in this box and get 61. So to find my missing joint frequency, all I have to do is take the total, subtract off the one joint frequency, and it will give me the other joint frequency. So all I have to do is 76 minus 47, and whenever I do that, that becomes 16, like simple elementary math. This becomes 29. And you can also check to see if you get that number when you subtract these because they have to match. So 61, 61 minus 32 will also give you 29. So the missing joint frequency is 29. So that answers the first part. Then find percent of males who do not like orange juice. So First of all, it says find the percent of males, so that's not just finding the total number of males who do not like orange juice. But we do first need to find the box that is representing males who do not like orange juice. So that, if we find males, there's males not like orange juice, so where they come together is the number of males who do not like orange juice. So in this problem, we have 12 males who do not like orange juice, but that is not your answer because that is the number of males who do not like orange juice. It wants to find the percent. So if you think back, you should have gone over this before, to find the percent of something, you take the part and divide it by the total, the overall total. So anytime you're finding percent, you're going to have to divide by the overall total. So here, our overall total is 120. So in order to get the percent of males who do not like orange juice, you take the number of males who do not like orange juice and divide it by the total number of people in the survey. So here, we'll take 12 and divide it by 120. And that will equal, if you divide that out, you get 0.1. But then remember to change that to a percent, you have to move your decimal point back two spots 
So your actual percent would be 10%. So that is what your final answer should be, 10%. So you take the part and divide it by the total. All right, I want you to try this one on your own. So pause the video and see if you can get this one. All right, so first we're filling in the missing joint frequency. So here's our missing joint frequency. So again, to do that, we're going to take the total of the column or row and subtract off the joint frequency that goes with it. So here we could take 60 minus 21, or we could take 65 minus 26. Okay, you can use that calculator to do that. Whenever you work that out, either way, you're going to get your missing joint frequency of 39. All right, so next, we then need to find the percent of females who do not, who like orange juice. Sorry, females who like orange juice. So first, we find females. Yes, they like orange juice, so they come together right there. So 26 is my number of females who like orange juice, but I have to take that number and divide it by my overall total, which is 118. And this is actually a kind of a confusing way to say this. It says the percent of females who like orange juice. That should really say the percent of um, the percent of everyone who are females who like orange juice. Because uh, that, that can throw people off a little bit, thinking it's like I'm divided by just the females, which is here. So the wording on that's a little off, but it should be like the percent of everyone who are females who like orange juice. So anyway, I take my part, 26, and divide it by my overall total, which is 118. Okay, so whenever I do that, in my calculator, I get 26 divided by 118, and I get 0.2203. a long decimal, which I'll round to 0.2203. And then again, that's my decimal, but it wants a percent. To change to percent, we take the decimal point and move it over two spots. When I move it over two spots, I will get roughly 22%. So your final answer for that should be 22%. All right, next, there are things called relative frequency two-way tables. So sometimes a two-way table will be written with decimals in each box. These decimals represent the percent, the percentage of the total for each box. The overall total or it will equal one. To get the actual number for each box, you will mul must multiply the decimal by the total number. And this will make more sense as we look at an example. But basically with relative frequency tables, the percentage or the decimals represent the percent of each box. And like I said, you're going to have to multiply it. Like, do you want the actual number? You have to multiply the decimal by the total number that they give you. Let me first show you what a relative frequency table might look like. So, first of all, let me um, specify something. The actual relative frequency table will not have these, like, it won't have the fractions, it just has the numbers. So it would just have like 0 0.09, 0 0.16, 0 0.25, and so on. So for example, this is saying 9% of everyone in this are males who drive SUVs. 0.16% of the um, total are males who drive sports cars. 0.25% are just males. 0.35% are people who drive sports cars, and so on. But for example, 
Let me show you what it means when it says like you have to multiply the decimal by the total. The total number of people in this is 240. That's the total number of people in the survey or in the um, frequency table. So like if I'm trying to find the males who drive sports cars, I take the decimal 0 0.16 and multiply it by 240. That's my total number. And then that will give you the total number of males who actually drive sports cars. Because 16, we know 16% of them do, but we need to figure out the actual number. So the actual number for males who drive sports cars would be 39. Obviously you saw that already with this number, but that's, those numbers will not be given to you in regular relative, fre relative frequency tables. So that is something you need to also be able to do is go from the percent to the actual number. All right, let's look at this example. So, 300 people were surveyed on whether they like orange juice or not. How many males do not like orange juice? Okay, so, how many males do not like orange juice? First of all, I need to find that box. Males do not like orange juice. Males, no, 0.27. So, 0.27 or what that means is 27% of the total number of people do not like orange juice. So to get my actual number, I take my decimal, 0.27, and I have to multiply it by my total. If you recognize, the very first thing they said was my total. 300 people were surveyed. So I take 0.27 and multiply it by 300. That is my total number of people. So I'm multiplying 0.27 by 300, and that is going to give me my total number of males who do not like orange juice. So 0.27 times 300, and I get a total of 81. So 81 of all surveyed were males who do not like orange juice. So that is also going to be important to know is how to go from a relative frequency table to the number of um, the actual number for each box as well. So that is two-way tables. Hopefully that um, helps you understand a little bit of how they how they work, how they're read, all that stuff. Um, we'll work with those some more. But two-way tables definitely pop up quite a bit, so you do want to know how they work. Thanks.